mountains keep like rams. Welcome, <laughs> day two, season five. We give glory to God. Welcome, beloved. Welcome, Karibu in Swahili. Hallelujah. And at your word, they keep still. Sustain the whole world in your hands. Welcome, beloved of the Lord. We honor, honor, honor the Lord at this time in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Malcolm David taking you through season five. And we are on Psalm 2 as we come through reading the six pack plus. As we get on also to Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, we go on to Exodus, we come to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and then we shall go into Ephesians and then Revelation. Beloved, the word of the Lord says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 23, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you the night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed. He took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For when I came, the Lord's death until he comes. Beloved, we are on Psalm 2 and we are, before we start, we commence with the communion even as the Lord enables us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's pray for the bread and pray for the cup. Our Father, we are grateful for this opportunity you have given unto us. We are grateful for the bread. We are grateful for the cup that symbolizes your death and we associate and proclaim it. So, Lord, we pray as we partake of this bread and this cup, Lord, that you lead us by your righteousness and that, Lord, indeed, you will establish yourself in us, O God. We come to embrace you, sweet Jesus. We pray that you will open our eyes to see the scriptures again. We pray that you will open our ears to hear the Holy Spirit and that, Lord, you will guide us even as we continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's partake of the bread together and also take off the cup. Welcome. Let's partake of the bread. this wonderful broadcast lord god we honor you for your goodness and mercy we thank you for allowing us to come into this time and lord we thank you as we proclaim the word that lord you will lead us we plead the blood of jesus of our thoughts our minds and we pray that lord you will enable us and establish us in the name of our lord jesus christ amen and amen psalm 2 psalm 2 psalm 2 psalm 2 it says, why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord. They say, let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. 
the enthroned one in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He then rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter, you will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you be destroyed in your way. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Beloved, embracing the Lord is a powerful thing. When we read Psalm chapter 2, we see a people rebelling against God, a people rebelling against the King of Kings. Culturally, we see we are in a time when people are outrightly rejecting God and even saying, it's my life. Let me live my life the way I want my life. That's the kind of mentality that is upon here. It's also a time when people are saying to each other, I know how I relate with my God. I don't need how you interpret the scripture. I interpret it for myself the way I want it. Beloved of the Lord, the accepting of Christ versus the, uh, the embracing of Christ, the accepting of Christ, everyone accept Christ. Even some of the people will say, they will say, ah, even the demons know he is the king of kings. But have you embraced him as Lord? Have you allowed him to say, have you allowed him to come into your heart? Because as you see what the nations do, they conspire and the people plot in vain. They plot in vain. Psalm 2 verse 2. The kings of the earth rise up and rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one saying, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. But I thank God for the response that God has when people do this. He says, the one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. You cannot fight God and win. I'm telling you, a man was meant to be a man cannot change and become a woman. The functions of a man, man's body cannot be changed even by science, even by medicine, even by what? To change and become a woman. That can never happen. Even by witchcraft, it cannot happen. They will still be a woman. They will still be a man. And if they do not embrace the Lord, well, their rebellion is futile. Because the one who sits in heaven laughs. Embrace Jesus. Embrace him as Lord. Hallelujah. You may have accepted Christ, but have you embraced him? Think about that before you continue saying yes or no. To embrace something is deeply spiritual, very spiritual. Because of that, there are some things in your life that, that you won't want to embrace, so they won't go into your heart. I know each of us has a story, and every one of our stories present good news. There's a reason you're here, and you have a particular background. Some of us don't like our own story, but you are a masterpiece, and no one has a better story than you. No matter what it is, it is still being written. You can get to decide how it will end. Do not conspire against the Lord. You will not win. I say you will not win. You can never win. If you try to go against the Lord, you can't win. We get to decide. We get to ask him every day, every night to be our divine strength. Beloved, pray every day to love Jesus and his word with all your heart. With all your heart. Every single time you come to this broadcast, if you forget anything, remember this. I am here to love Jesus. I'm here to love his word. I'm here to love him with all my heart. And what should we fear more than anything? Missing Jesus. 
missing heaven, missing Jesus. That is one thing that we should always fear. Because, beloved, when we embrace the Lord, we are coming and allowing ourselves to tell Him, write these words, write these words in my heart. Write them in the tablets of my heart. Write these words in the tablets of my heart. You know, there are three dimensions. We will see them in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 3. We shall get there tomorrow. The thing, the a dimension of ask, think, or imagine. God has given us those th that dimension so that we can embrace Him by asking Him into our lives. We ask the Lord into our lives, and then we imagine His kingdom come. Ask of me. Look at verse eight of Psalm two. It says, "Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession." Niombe, uniombe, nami nitakupa mataifa. Mihisho ya dunia, nitakupa mataifa kuwa uridhi wako. He says that the, in, the, 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 the inheritance, hallelujah, I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You may not know what this means, beloved, but I want you to embrace Christ and to come to Him daily and tell Him, Father, your word says, ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance. I've come to ask for the nations. I ask for the nations. I ask for the nations in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask. I ask. I ask for the nations. I ask for the nations. Ask for the nations in the name of Jesus. Why would we just stop right there and ask the Lord for the nations in the name of Jesus? Father, we ask you for the nations. We ask you for the nations, oh God. We ask you for the nations. We ask you for the nations. We ask you for the nations, oh God. We ask you for the nations. 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 The ends of the earth for our possession in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you glory. We glorify your name. We go now to the book of uh, Proverbs 23 in the name of Jesus. Open Proverbs 23. We are going to Proverbs. Proverbs 23. Do not miss Jesus. Hey! Proverbs 23. That's where we are heading now. Have you heard what the Lord has done? What a sweet God we serve. Hallelujah! Sound the trumpet! there proverbs 23 proverbs 23 in the name of our lord jesus christ proverbs chapter 23 that's where we are one when you seek to dine with a ruler not well what is before you and put a knife to your throat if you are given to gluttony do not crave his delicacies for his food is deceptive verse 4 do not wear yourself out to get rich have the wisdom to show restraint. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Verse 6. Do not eat the food of a stingy man. Do not crave his delicacies. For he is the kind of man who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the little you have eaten. And you will have wasted your compliments. Verse 9. Do not speak to a fool, for you will scorn the wisdom of your words. Do not move an ancient boundary stones, or crouch the fields of the fatherless. For their defender is strong, and he will take up their case against you. Verse 12. Apply your heart to instruction, and your ears to words of knowledge. Verse number 13. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish him with the rod, he will not die. Punish him with the rod and save his soul from death. Verse 15, Proverbs 23. My son, if your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad. My innermost being will rejoice 
when your lips speak what is right. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future for you. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Proverbs 23, 19. Listen, my son, and be wise, and keep my heart on the, path, on the right path. Do not join those who drink too much wine. Or gods themselves on meat. For drunkards and gluttons become poor. And drowsiness clothes them in rags. Verse 22. Listen to, my, to your father who gave you life. And do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Get wisdom, discipline and understanding. Verse 24. The father of a righteous man has great joy, and he who has a wise son delights in him. Proverbs 23, verse 5, 25. Your, may your father and mother be glad. May she who gave you birth rejoice. Hallelujah. Verse 26. My son, give me your heart, and let your eyes keep to my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit, and a wayward wife is a narrow well. Like a bandit, she lies in wait and multiplies the unfaithful among men. Verse 29. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Verse 30. Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine, do not graze at wine when it is red. When it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly, in the end it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights, your mind imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you say, but I am not hurt. They beat me. But I do not feel it. Have you seen drunkards? This is what they say. They hit me, but you will say, I am not hurt. They bet me, but I don't feel it. When I when will I wake up so that I can find another drink? This are actually a description of people who have not embraced Jesus. People who have embraced drunkenness. People who have embraced gluttony. Let me tell you, beloved of the Lord, that is a category you want to flee from. How can you flee from it? By embracing Jesus. Any addict, any addiction can be solved, not by medicine, not by counseling, but by embracing Jesus. Any marital problem can be fixed, not by trying to sit down with the pastor or the bishop, but by embracing Jesus. When we embrace Jesus, we will indeed experience a future hope. And our hope will not be cut off because that is the portion of the righteous of the Lord. So whatever it is you are facing in 2021, whatever you are going to get into in 2022 or 2023 or whichever year you are watching this broadcast, whatever time, be it in the morning, in the night, in the afternoon, I want you to know that God wants you to embrace his son, Jesus. That's why he says in Psalm, uh, Psalm verse number 12, Chapter 2 verse 12, kiss the son or he will be angry and your way will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. I declare, beloved, that you will be among them that will take refuge in him. We're going now to the book of, um, we're going now to the book of uh, Ecclesiastes 5. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful combination. Wonderful combination. Hallelujah. Hey. Ecclesiastes 5. Dependable. 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 Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 5 
Ecclesiastes 5. It says, Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know what they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Verse 3. As a dream comes when there are many cares, so the speech of the fool of a fool when there are many words. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 4. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your word, your vow. It is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. Verse 6. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. And do not protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. Why should you, why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Verse 7. Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, stand in awe of God. The fear of the Lord, beloved of the Lord, is one of the greatest things that leads us to embrace Jesus. That leads us to embrace him, to hold on to him, to abide to him, to stay in him, to fear him, to stand in awe of God. For the beginning, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And then and, and the fear and understanding is fear of the Holy One. The fear of the Lord. Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, stand in awe of God. In this time, may the Lord establish you and me to stand in awe, constantly to always fear the Lord, and not to be quick to make vows, and then we tell the temple messenger, sorry, my vow was a mistake. That's why I encourage people in church, when you are going to give your offerings, do not be quick to write pledges, and then you don't redeem them. No. When I was growing up, I never used to understand what the announcer used to come and announce. He used to come and announce, and I could hear him say, for those of you who have pledged to do something, 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 you are being reminded that the last day of your pledge is this. Then I asked myself, what is a pledge? I didn't know. Honestly, I did not know what was a pledge as a young boy. So I said, what is a pledge? People are pledging all the time. I pledge to support Mission Monday. I pledge. I said, please don't, don't, don't pledge. Hey, because you pledge, and then immediately after you pledge, you start saying, oh, I have so many problems, I have school fees, I have this. Wait first, I finish. Please, you are not in ob any obligation to make a pledge before God. As you start the year, and in your church there is a building project, or there is something that is going on there, do not be quick to stand and to speak words before God. And to say before God that I want to give a pledge of one million shillings and you do not have the one million. Yes, I know there is faith, but do not be quick to say things before the Lord. Do not be quick. He says, do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Let your words be very few. If you have made a pledge and said, I will go and meet this person, please make every effort to go and meet that person. If you have made an, an effort and said, made, an, make, uh, made, a, made a decision and said, I will go and visit so and so, and I will go and pray for them, then you must make sure you do exactly that. That is embracing Christ. What we are reading here, all these chapters, is just basically leading to this. Is equals to embracing Jesus. That is the main thing I want you to know. It's not a new teaching. It is embracing Jesus. Ephesians 5, Ecclesiastes 5, 8. It says, If you see the poor oppressed in a district, and justice and rights denied, don't be surprised at such things. For one official is eyed by a higher one, and over them both are others higher still. The increase from the land is taken by all. The king himself profits from the fields. Verse 10. Whoever loves money never has money enough. 
Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. Beloved, one of the hindrances of embracing Christ is the love of money. And I tell you, beloved, that a lot of people that are, I meet a lot of people that really, truly love money with all their hearts. And yet they are extremely, extremely in challenging situations. The first altar call that they need to receive, first, Yes, they received the Lord Jesus Christ. They embraced, they accepted Christ. But have they embraced Jesus? When you embrace Jesus, the love of money is far from you. And if it is not yet far from you, you must take time to pray and tell God, Father, separate me from the love of money in the name of Jesus, for it is the root of all evil. Money answers all things, but money is not the love. We should not have the love of money. Because if you have the love of money, you will never have money enough. Even if you get a billion, you will never have enough. Whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his, with his income. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owner except to feast his eyes on them? Verse 12. The sleep of a laborer is sweet whenever he eats, whether he eats little or much, but the abundance of a rich man permits him no sleep. Verse 13. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner, or wealth lost through some misfortune, so that when he has a son, there is nothing left for him. Verse 15. Naked a man comes from his mother's womb, and as he comes, so he departs. Ecclesiastes 5.15 He takes nothing from his labor that he can carry in his hand. Ecclesiastes 5.16 This too is a grievous evil. As a man comes, so he departs. And what does he gain since he toils for the wind? Ecclesiastes 5.17 All his days he eats in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. Verse 18. Then I realized, it is good and proper for a man to eat and drink, and to find satisfaction in his toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given him, for this is his lot. Verse 19. Moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions, and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. Ecclesiastes verse 20. He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with the gladness of heart. Hallelujah! Hey! Hey! Hallelujah! We head out now to the book of Exodus chapter 2. Come and magnify, come and manifest yourself, Lord. Allah wa daina the one who draws the fire the one the one Exodus Exodus chapter 2 Allah wa daina the one who draws the fire come and manifest Come and manifest yourself. Okay, Exodus chapter 2 is where we find the birth, the birth of Moses, the deliverer of Israel from Egypt. So hear the word of God. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman and she became pregnant. Thank you, Jesus. Just the first verse of Exodus chapter 2 shows you something so powerful that Moses was a pure Levite he was meant to be a priest hence his father and mother were referred to as a man of the house of Levi and married a Levite woman verse 2 listen and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. 
But when she could hide him no longer, she made a papyrus basket for him, coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. Verse 4. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent a slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse her, to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. This is where we see another wonderful thing that is in the book of Psalm 18. <laughs> And sometimes you look at the scriptures and actually you see the scripture open and another scripture open. Psalm 18, verse... Um, hallelujah. Psalm 18, that talks about that the Lord reached me out and drew me out of uh, the courts of the... Uh -huh, the sun, uh, no, 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 no. Is that quick? Yeah, smoke goes and then he mounted... Out of the brightness, the Lord thundered, he shot his arrows. It, uh -huh. uh, Psalm 18, verse 16, it says, He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. Moses could very well quote Psalm 18, 16, that the Lord drew him out of the deep waters, literally. Verse 11 of Exodus. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at the very uh, watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew out of his own people, glancing his way this way and no one and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, Why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you kill the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, What I did might have, might, must, have, must have become known. Verse number 15. When Pharaoh heard this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat by a well. Now a priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the troughs of water, uh, to, for, to water their father's flock. Some shepherds came along and drove them away, but Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. Exodus chapter 2 verse 18. When the girls returned to Ruel, their father asked them, Why have you returned so early today? They answered, An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? asked his daughters. Why did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the man who gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. Zipporah gave birth to a son and Moses named him Gershom. 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 If you read Judges chapter 18 verse 30, it says this, that they are Danites set up for themselves. They are the Danites set up for themselves, the idols. And Jonathan, son of Gershom, the son of Moses, and his sons were priests for the tribe of Dan until the time of the captivity of the land. This Gershom be, he also continued to become a priest. And Moses named him Gershom. You can do your own study in your own time and find out what Gershom is about. What the name Gashom means. I have became saying I became an alien in a foreign land. Since we are here, and it's good to always, you know, give you a cue how to do your own study in your own time. You can just find out what does Gashom mean. 
Gashom, Gashom, Gashom. What does the name Gashom mean? Gashom is a name that means a stranger here in Hebrew, which the text argues as a reference of Moses' flight to Egypt. So Gashom is a stranger here. Saying, I have become an alien in a foreign land. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out. And their cry for help, because of their slavery, went up to God. God heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. I come to mention to you, Exodus 2.25, embrace Christ and God will look to you. God will look to you and will be concerned about you. God will look to you and be concerned about you, just like he heard the groaning and remembered his covenant. Last night I was in a prayer meeting praying for the land of Kenya. And one of the prayer points that came up was about the cry that is coming from this land of Kenya, from the women, about the unfaithfulness of their husbands. A huge cry has reached the eyes of the Lord. A lot of the husbands are unfaithful, and the women are crying, not because of, not because of, not because of God, but they are crying because of their husbands. They are crying. They are saying our husbands have not... They are not in the, in the house anymore. They are drunk. They are unfaithful. They are not walking in the way of the covenant of marriage we entered into. And God will look on those women and be concerned about them. A nation that bears the name Kenya. Giving a red, well, red carpet welcome to a man that is bringing debauchery into our nation. The 31st of December, before we had, last year it was a bit different because we had so many controls about COVID-19. But now the controls are not there and there are huge parties all over the place. And one of the things that I want to tell you, beloved of the Lord, all over the world, is that God is looking on the people that are groaning and that are calling on Him and that have embraced Christ. And he is concerned about them. So I come to tell you today, God is concerned about you. God is concerned about your nation, Benin. God is concerned about your nation, Senegal, DRC Congo. God is concerned about Zimbabwe. God is concerned about Kenya, about Somalia. God is concerned about Alaska. God is concerned about Canada. God is concerned about, yeah, about Middle East, the whole of Middle East, about Jerusalem. He's concerned about Israel. And this one says, God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. May the Lord look upon you and be concerned about you as you embrace Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen. We go on now to the wonderful book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians. Embrace Jesus. Let him be your Lord. Let him be your Lord. Let him be your Lord. 1 Corinthians 9. Come and manifest yourself. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Corinthians is the book right after the book of Romans. And if you are new to your Bible, you can go all the way to the table of contents. But the book of Romans and then after Romans you come to 1 Corinthians. So 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. So the word of the Lord says this. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not the result of my work in the Lord? Verse 2. Even though I may not be apostle to others, surely I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defense to those who sit in judgment on me. 
Don't we have the right to food and drink? Don't we have the right to take a believing wife along with us, as do other apostles and lords, brothers and Cephas? Or is it only I and Barnabas who must work for a living? Verse 7. Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat its grapes? Who tends a flock and does not drink of the milk? Do I say this merely from a human point of view? Doesn't the law say the same thing? For it is written in the law of Moses, Don't muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Is it about oxen that God is concerned about? Verse 10. Surely he says this for us, doesn't he? Yes, this was written for us, because when the plowman plows and the thresher threshes, they ought to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? Verse number 12. If others have this right to support of support from you, shouldn't we have it more all the more? But we did not use this right. On the contrary, we put up with everything rather than hinder the gospel of Jesus, of Christ. Verse number 13. Don't you know that those who work in the temple get their food from the temple? And those who serve at the altar share in what is offered at the altar. Verse number 14. In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. But have I not used, but I have not used any of these rights, and I am not writing this in the hope that you will do such things for me. I would rather die than have anyone deprive me of this boast. Verse 16. Yet when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, for I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. Verse 17. I preach voluntarily. I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discouraging, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. Verse number 18. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may, it, I may offer it free of charge, and so not make use of my rights in preaching it. Verse number 19. Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I will win those under the law. Verse 21. To those not having the law, I became like one having the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so as to win those who are having the law. Verse 22. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that by all possible means I might save some. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 23. I do this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Let me highlight this one of First Corinthians 9 verse 24. It's a very, very powerful word. It says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way to get the prize. Run in such a way to get the prize. Verse 25. Everyone who competes in the games does so, does, uh, goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Verse 26. Therefore, I don't run like a man running aimlessly. I don't fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body. And make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. Beloved of the Lord, First Corinthians chapter 9 
gives us the core, the running order of serving God in our generation. The running order is embracing Christ and beating up our body. Romans 8 verse 13, it says something. It says, for if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. So I beat my body. I live according to the Spirit. How do I do this? I fight every day. Like I mentioned to you yesterday about the overcoming, the spirit of the overcomer, you must fight sin daily. Sin will be waiting for you as you finish. You say amen like this. You start your day, phone call one. Sin is there. You start moving out. You start, if you have a car, God has blessed you, you're driving. Just as you reverse like this, somebody's there, ready to test you and to tempt you. So I beat my body. The word of God, Romans 5, 8, 13, it says, If you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. You will live. I repeat again. You will live. If you put to death the misdeeds of the body. How do you put to death the misdeeds of the body? It's by embracing Christ. It's a deep spiritual work. It is not a physical work. And that's why you see a lot of people are challenged because they do not invest time in the spiritual work. The spiritual work must be done. You must be able to embrace Christ totally, 100%. You embrace him into your life. You kiss the son, lest he be angry. Hallelujah. We go now to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. What a joy the Lord is helping us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2. As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. When you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. There are, there's a spirit that is at work in those who are disobedient. Anyone that you see disobedience. Let me tell you something in Ephesians. We shall read Ephesians 5, 6. But let me just read it. It says, let no one deceive you with empty words. Because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. God's wrath is already on those who are disobedient. Those people who are saying, this is my life. My life is my life. You take care of your life. And think people are clapping. They say, hey, that's a nice song. That's a nice song. Hey. They're even trying to bring it in church. Say, it's my life. You take care of your life. Looks like something very nice. But I come to tell you, beloved of the Lord, embrace Jesus. Hallelujah. The New Year celebrations will last a day. And after that, the people will start groaning and saying, Oh, where is the money? Where is the money? You tell me, where are the millions and billions of money that are being used to organize huge, huge, huge events of debauchery, of wickedness? People to be engaged in gluttony and drunkenness and sexual immorality so that they can cross over into the new year with good sexual immorality, with very good drunkenness. Can you imagine yourself preparing yourself to cross over from one year to the next year full of drunkenness and immorality? Hey! The Lord have mercy. The Lord have mercy. The Lord have mercy. I'm broadcasting this at 8.40 a.m. from a land that bears the name Kenya. And I mention this to all the nations of the earth. Because the nations of the earth are pleasing before God. The Lord looks at men in every category. And he looks at them and he sees that all men are flesh. All men are liars. Without Christ, all men are liars. Ephesians 2.1 says, As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work with those who are disobedient. 
You know, cultural rebellion against God is something that we must run away from. Cultural rebellion. Whereby everybody says, oh, you, you are Catholic, I am Pentecostal, you are uh, Roman Catholic, you are Coptic, you are Islamic, you are what? So we are all having a form of godliness. So now, okay, fine. So let us now go and cross the year and let us go and do all sorts of debauchery because we also know God individually. Everybody knows God individually, they say. You can accept Christ but choose to embrace him. You can, increase him, you can accept Christ and then immediately after you accept him, you stop and you turn away. I'll give you a small uh, a story, illustration, actually a story that happened yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. I was moving along the road and uh, I had some uh, packets of flour that I was, I told God, show me how to distribute because it's not a lot. And I'm not going out in that ministry of mercy giving out because I don't I didn't have enough to give, but I have a couple of uh, 500 gram uh, packets. So as I was driving along, this very old lady, she stopped me and said, "I'm asking for food. I want some unga." So I realized, ah, I have something. So this woman, first I preached to her the gospel. I tell her, Jesus loves you. I'm still in the chariot. I didn't come out. Jesus loves you. This, this, this. I shared. They said, would you like to receive Christ? She said, yes. I will pray for her. She received Christ. I'm still in the chariot. So, I, I gave her. She comes from one of the neighboring slums near where I was. And I was like, now Lord, I have not found time to go there. And you have not ordered me to go there at this time. Because... This lady now goes back there. Let me just give her. These packets I have, they are small. They are about six small packets. Say, so you take this one. And also, when you go back where you are going, please do share with the people. She said, thank you. God bless you. All those things. Then she sat down next to a shop there. Then I just had just moved like less than 20 meters. I looked on my right. There was another lady, old lady, sitting by the pavement. I looked at her with compassion and I said, God bless you. She was looking very sick, but old. So I said, I've just given that lady over there some packets of unga. Please, let me go back and ask her for a packet, then I can give you. Hey, Lord have mercy. These are moments I've led somebody to Christ. I reversed the vehicle, went back and I said to her, Please come, Mama. That lady looked at me like, What do you mean? He said, I cannot come. Aye! I said, What do you mean? This person, she has just received mercy right now. But now she's full of pride and she cannot wake up. She even looked and said, That lady, Anajikalisha hapo kwa nini? Anaona ni mepatiwa, ndiyo pia ya nataka. Akai, watch animalize. Ah! I said, what? This has just happened. Then I said, Lord, thank you for the lessons. I asked the lady, please come. And I got her more than, more than just a packet of unga because God had taught me this one. Yes, you have just prayed for her. She has received the Lord, but her heart is not yet embraced Jesus. She cannot be able to give. She has just received for free three kilograms of flour. Small packets of 500 grams. But she now cannot give this one who she doesn't know who was genuinely in need out the street. This one was strong lady. She can walk. Now I went out and I saw that she had also been given some food in one of, the, one, one of our sisters along that path. So I drove ahead there and asked, do you know that lady? He said, yes. She passes here every time. And she's always asking for food. I said, now from today, her door is closed. This is how God works. He, you don't mess around with the Holy Spirit. She was being tested. If she had only given one packet to that other one there, heaven would have opened over her. But she picked her bags and walked away very fast. I know I will meet her again. <laughs> I know I will. I know I will. I know I will. I know. In Jesus' name. 
So if we who have been raised in Christ, we are seated in Christ. I want you to come and see this very well. That illustration, the Lord helped me and he helped me to know how to deal with these people properly. I will not go out to issue sweets and, 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 and blankets. If you have that ministry, come, I'll take you to those people. My work is to give them the gospel. Give them the gospel. Because others have made that an occupation. That they have spoiled for the ones who are genuinely in need. So it's only God who will help us. Because I clearly had heard the Holy Spirit say to me, just give her one packet. But for me, I thought, ah, since I will not be able to go for that place, let me just give her some more. She is going to be kind to give the others. Hey, that was my lesson. The Lord helped me to learn. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. As we are coming to close, we after this read Revelation 4 and we are done. It says, also, you also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of the sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. Ephesians 2 verse 4. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgression. Now, this chapter 2 of Ephesians, you need to read it slowly. Because it is taking you to that wonderful embrace of our Lord Jesus. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of the sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were nature by nature objects of wrath. I'm reading from the NIV 1984 version. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us up with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. That is the position where the Lord took us. He says, all of us lived among those who are disobedient, gratifying the cravings of the sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Ha! In verse 7, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparably riches of his grace expressed in his kindness for us in Christ Jesus. Verse 8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is not by works so that no one can boast. Verse number 10, for we are workmanship, God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us in advance to do. Ephesians 2.11 Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who themselves call themselves the circumcision, that is done in the body by hands of men. Remember that at that time we were separated from Christ excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who, was once, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Jesus, through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and destroyed the barrier the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose. Let me just read the, this particular one uh, in the, the says by abolishing in his flesh the law, its commandments and regulations. In Colossians 2 verse 14 says, Having cancelled the written code with its regulations that was against us 
and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. His purpose was, now as I continue to read Ephesians 2.15, his purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. Ephesians 2.16 And in this one body, to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away, and peace to those who are near. For through him we, have both, we, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, there you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises before become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built up together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. I encourage you for further reading of Revelation chapter, of Ephesians chapter 2. We come to Ephesians, Revelation chapter 4. The throne in heaven. After this I looked, and the fair there before me a door standing open. I want you to use your imagination as I read. Your imagination. Remember I told you of three dimensions. Ask, think, imagine. Those three dimensions. I will be sharing with you more tomorrow as we read uh, Psalm 3. As I looked, after this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I heard, speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must soon take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven, with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there, had the appearance of jasper and carnelian, a rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were twenty-four other thrones, and seated on them were twenty-four elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The, fifth, the fourth had, was, was like a flying eagle. Verse, four, verse 8, it says, each of the four living creatures had six wings and were covered with eyes all round. Even under his wings, day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the twenty and four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Beloved, that is Revelation 4 and the end of the six-pack plus that we are reading. We honor the Lord for allowing us into this time. You are here, you are not born again. The word of God says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus... I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart God raised you from the dead. Write my name 
in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone, the new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, now you are crossed over from death to life. I speak blessing to you even as you have joined us in season 5 of 150 Days of Psalms. I also want to invite you to continue to be a blessing, just like as it says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, that it is, you do not muzzle an ox while it's trading out the grain. As we serve God in this way, we thank God, even though we have also have to work, there is importance for us to stand with the servant of God as he does this work. It's very, very important. It's not for my benefit. It is for yours. I have given myself to God. He meets all my needs according to his riches in glory. But if you are standing in the place of benefiting from God's word that you are listening to, the word of God itself teaches you to stand with the servants of God that are bringing the word to you. It's important for this to you to know. You don't have to, like again I said in the book of Ecclesiastes 5, don't be quick to make any pledges before God. Because God is in heaven and you are on earth. But I pray that this season 5, we move easily. The Lord is helping us. We are moving easily. He's bringing every need into its fulfillment. And I pray for you. May the Lord grant you answers to prayer. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen and Amen. See you in the next video. In the name of Jesus. Shalom. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Hallelujah. Shalom. Kwaheri.